Stick with me as we build our own hand dug well. To give credit to where credit is due, most of this information I got from this book. Now I'll link that in the description below to the Amazon book. Also you can buy all the supplies I talk about right here on Amazon and I'll put those links in as well too. Now I have to apologize because most of this footage is from 2012 and I shot it with my cell phone. I really wasn't planning on making a story out of it. I just found it. So I cleaned it up the best I could and decided to put it up as a story. So enjoy. Hi, uh, this is Taryn Lupo and welcome to my video about hand digging a well. We're going to talk for a second just about why do we want to hand dig a well. It's kind of very old school. That's the point. I want to be able to know that I can dig a well if I have no electricity, no water around. Just kind of a combination of the old way to do it and uh, the new way. I'm going to show you uh, I think the cheapest and easiest way to do it and we're going to start first by actually dowsing. Now dowsing is a lot of superstition but the old timers swear by it. You're supposed to be able to get a uh, let's see I think it's a witch hazel or a willow and uh, I don't have either of those on my property all I have is pine. So I'm probably going to use a pendulum and that'll be fun. I don't know if it'll work or not, but honestly, how often do you get to use a dowsing rod <laughs> or a pendulum and have that legit in life? Okay, thanks. All right, so this is, we're gonna use the pendulum style. And you have to ask the pendulum. First up, show me yes. And the yes is a circle, show me no. No is back and forth. Do you just walk around and say, is this a good place to dig? Is there water? Is there water? It's staying still. It's a good place to dig saying no. How about here? Is this a good place to dig for water? No. I'm going to put it right in there with this. Is this a good place to dig for water? No. Doesn't like any of these places. Is this a good place to dig for water? Yes, it likes here. Okay, so this is where we'll dig. This is pretty convenient. Now, there's some general rules if you don't want to use this old stuff. Obviously, there's um, you want to dig into valleys, not in hills. But you want to go to where water runs to. Another simple kind of common sense way is to look wherever there's a puddle. Usually, when your land uh, when your land drains, there's going to be a big puddle of water. That's a good place to dig because the water's obviously going in the ground there. All right, so we're going to be using a hand auger. It's basically a shovel that spins in a circle. And we're gonna keep attaching pipes to this until we get down past the water level. I just did a little starter hole to test the auger, it works good. These are about 50 bucks on Amazon. First thing you wanna do though is take an old bucket and then cut the, uh, cut the bottom off, okay? We're gonna do that and you're gonna make a collar so it fits around the hole and dirt doesn't keep falling back in it as you dig. So we're gonna do that now. All right, so we are already through the topsoil at just a couple feet. I think we're about four feet down. And yeah, that's about three to four feet. And look at how it's changing color. It went from dirt to clay. Now it did rain recently a lot, so I'm not trusting this. We're gonna go real deep. But you're gonna go through the topsoil layer and then the clay layer where there's gravel and clay, it'll be all wet. That's your actual layer of the well where you're getting the water. Once you get through that layer, you go a couple more feet down and you're not into water anymore. You're just into, um, into harder dirt. So that's what we're looking for. We'll bring it back. I'm going to add some more poles to this. So I'm going to unscrew it and add some poles. All right. So the way this thing comes apart is the top, the shovel comes off. We've added a two foot pole. And that's what I'm using a book that recommends two feet pole to start with and then you go up to four feet. So the dirt comes out and something like this and what the easy way to do is set up a board to knock it on. So we're gonna pick this thing up, knock it on the board and it comes right out. All right, so we're about 20 feet now. We're gonna put on our last uh, up to 20 feet. You can see how long the shaft is here. And usually what I do is to get it loose, I actually use a pole for leverage and then just twist. And it'll break the pipe in the middle, we'll add another. 
Once your auger starts to get really long, it is really tough to control and it takes a lot of muscle. Sometimes this is definitely a two-man job near the end. Back when I built this in 2012, I had to buy each piece. So a lot of this was just PVC tubing I got at the hardware store. But these days, you can actually buy a kit right on Amazon that I think includes most of what you need. I will link it in the description. So let's pick it up from there. By the way, my dad and my stepmom showed up and helped me assemble this. So you'll see them and hear them in this part of the video too. All right, so the shaft has been dug. Here's the pipe. I had a couple, a couple pieces to get it to go, but the pipe's about 24, 25 feet. I think my shaft's around a little over 20. What you want to do is cap the end. So there's the cap. And then you want to put gills in it. And these gills will alternate every couple feet. You'll see them going up. You'll see the gills, but then you'll notice that I also do it on the other side in between. So you have a gill about every foot. I just used a circular saw, I'm using this circular saw. And uh, what you basically do, just put it down and give it a go. Just like that, and it leaves a gill. So these allow the water to flow in, but not so much the rocks and soil. The reason I didn't use just the septic system, you know how like you can get one for a leach field or something with holes in it. The holes are too big and it'll let in a lot of the rocks, which eventually will clog your well. So uh, we're gonna use slits instead, or I call them gills. So here's the well shaft. You can't really see very well, but we're now past, uh, I guess about 21 feet if you look how long this auger is. And you can see, when do you finally stop? This clay is all red. Georgia clay here and it's grit and kind of gravelly clay. That's what we've been in for about 17 feet. And then you'll notice it changed to this white stuff. And you can tell that, and it feels different that we're skidding around on some other kind of, uh, kind of dirt. So that's where we're gonna stop. All right, the chef is now filled with the casing. Um, I didn't get this on film because it took all hands to keep this thing straight and so the couplings didn't break apart when you lifted them straight up. You'll see there, that's the 20 mark where the coupling is. So we're a little over about 20 feet once it's finally in. Give it a good push. Now you have to level it and you're going to backfill it with pea gravel. All these bags here. We're going to backfill it up to the water line with pea gravel so you measure the water line first before you start. And then we're going to have to fill it while it's level. Now, if you don't have a level, there is a cell phone app, believe it or not. You put your iPhone on against it, and there is an app that acts as a level. Technology. How about that? All right. So we're going to get pea graveling. This next part is going to show you how to put together the actual pumping mechanism. And again, I bought this part on Amazon as a kit, and this kind of shows you how to assemble it. And I'll link that in the description below. Okay, so we started assembling. The first thing we did is put on the foot pump to the pipe. These are actually two pipes together. The cylinder is inside, so this is a system where there's a pump inside it. So there will be two pipes together. I bought this kit on Amazon, so you can find it there. And what you have to do is you have to screw all the inside pipes together and piece the outside pipes afterward. It goes down about 20 feet of this, so we'll be just doing this over and over. Since you're working with uh, water here, also be sure to Teflon tape the pieces you're putting together. Okay, so here's the final well casing. It's inserted. I put buckets around it, cut the ends off, and cascaded them up. The reason I did this, uh, obviously I put concrete around it, let it dry for a good week. I'm going to leave the buckets on for a while and then later I'll cut them off. But um, just to be sure there doesn't hurt anything to leave them on. Um, here's the casing. I stuck it way out and I'm going to cut it off now about oh, six inches above this piece here. And the well, the actual cylinder is ready. Remember this was two pipes and a pipe. It's 20 feet long. I decided to assemble it outside and then just stick it in. And there's the top of the well head. You can tie a string to the foot valve if you want, just in case you drop it in. 
this is not the last piece is actually does not have any sort of assembly on it and i'll show you that later we're going to glue some pieces to it one other thing about the casing i did it this style because i don't want to break my back when i pump and uh this will raise it away above the ground so i can stand up and pump it instead of leaning over did you see this that's just a bowl to keep the water out there you go <laughs> all right so now it's cut just cut it level i used a uh, four before there just to raise it up and I'm going to take the cheap method and just lower this thing in, and it'll catch on the the wellhead. You want me to hold the camera that while you guys lower it? <laughs> we could try to do that right there. Okay, so it's going to catch on that as we lower it in. There you okay, go. so now it's on. It's on. Point it at me. Because you can edit down. Mm -hmm. so we got to stand this thing up first. This is the hard part. Actually, come back up. One in gentle. Now, if you don't tie this off, you can lose it if your your well seal's not big enough. Since you tie it off, I'm good. He didn't because he put his all together. There you go. At one time. So now we just fit it in there. And you'll notice that we have some extra holes. I've got to get some caps that screw in. We are gonna just roll this down into the rubber. Get it in there. Okay. So that black seal goes all the way down. It will once I screw it, push on it. All right, so we pulled back up the well because I forgot to do something. Um, so that's a good thing I didn't seal down the pump and, and unscrew it and rescrew it. What we're doing is putting in weep holes. And you wanna put about quarter inch holes on all four sides to let the water drain so it doesn't freeze and break the pipe. It'll leap, uh, leach out down to the bottom of the well. So there we go, we're gonna put these in. You have to be extremely careful not to pierce the inside cylinder. So we're only gonna go in just a little nib. It has to be 18 inches below the About 18, frost line. yeah, below the frost line. Now. Okay, before we had just rested the casing on a double check, I pulled it out and then put the weeping holes in. Now, you'll see it's actually sealed. I, you have to unscrew all these, then you can push it into the casing, and now you'll retighten it down. Which suctions it. And you make sure you have someone holding this. If you lose it, you're screwed, and hopefully you have a well. <laughs> so, uh, hopefully you have a... Uh, a string on it too. To okay. stop it from falling in. So you can retrieve it if it falls. Thanks. This is the kit I bought, the handy well pump. Okay, it's basically designed to be PVC completely so nothing will ever rust. Um, and it's it's got a pumping mechanism inside, an extra cylinder that pulls water. I know normally the, the pitcher pumps are real pretty, but they do rust after a while. This is a kind of a forever pump, pretty much. And it's easy to risk repair if you break something with PVC. Okay, here's our last step. Everything's tightened down. I put this collar on, on the extension pipe here, and then right here I, I glued this end. You do not want to glue this collar on in case you want to take it off later. That's a no-no. But you do glue this part on, which is where the handle attach. We're going to put the handle on and pump in a second to see if we get water. <laughs> okay, so the handle's assembled has these foam grips, which is kind of nice. And it also comes with a cap that if you want to unscrew this, it'll come off and you can cap it for the winter or whatever you want to do, cap it. You can keep the handle so nobody screws with it. So that's kind of nice. It also is threaded on the well end, so you could tie a garden hose to it if you want. All right, so I lowered it because when I started messing with the pump, it was way too high to push up. So I dropped it way down, which, uh, Hopefully I calculated the weep line's good too. The weep hole should still be plenty of room. All right, so we're gonna give it a pump and see if it works. Now you'll have to prime it for a while. Oh, second pump. <laughs> Here we go. I got it. It's not bad. Good pressure for a hand pump. Okay, so now you'll want to, it's kind of leaking. Well, it's spraying to the side, it's not leaking. 
So we need to get this closer. I need to probably cut the collar down. So it's not leaking, but it, you want to let it pour out so that it sprays into your bucket. So that's great. Well, I can screw a, a thing on. A tube. Yeah. But a lot of times people are just holding it. There you go. What's up? How deep was your, how deep did you have to dig? This is 20 feet. That's not bad. This is as high as it can. If I go all the way up, I get a good push. But I'm just gonna do half push. Mission accomplished. There you go. Here's my pump, it's done. Look, look, look. I have water, oh my gosh. It works, <laughs> it works. All right, with the hand pump well, you're gonna notice the first couple days is gonna be very murky and muddy. It takes a while to clean out the well. And the more you use it, the better it gets. It creates channels. So you'll see, this is like a brown water coming out. You can get an idea, it's kind of muddy. That'll stop eventually the more you use it. You, the first couple times though, you're just gonna get nothing but mud water. Don't forget, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe to my channel. Also give this a thumbs up, a like, a share, or if you have something to add, remember to comment below. Thanks. Also, don't forget to stop by terranlupo.com. I have up videos that you can't see anywhere else. Currently, I have one on carnivorous plants and also how to make your own mead. All you have to do is go over and sign